a lot of comedians basically miss an opportunity with social media because they don't use it to kind of promote themselves. If they do use it, maybe not as effectively as they could. You can post one that will get a million views and then the next one you'll post will get 5,000 if you're lucky. It's a very supportive sort of atmosphere. Like a lot of comics go down there and try out new material and stuff. You get to see obviously people who are just starting out in comedy, but you also get a lot of like more seasoned acts, like pro, pro acts who are coming down and trying trying out new material. So you get a bit of a mix of quality, obviously, but it's it's a good room. It was one of my first jokes that I wrote. It's probably still one of the best jokes in terms of like the reaction that it gets. I, I set it up, like I say, I was at a business networking event last week and this fellow came up to me, asked me, what's my net worth? And then I pulled the net out and said, I don't know, I made it myself. My wife's from Tanzania, which surprises quite a lot of people because apparently I give off quite a racist vibe. I don't know if it's the, the shaved head or the clothes or some of my criminal convictions, but I can assure you I'm not racist, some of my best wives are black. Hi folks, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Sam Thorley on today's podcast. Uh, he is a content creator. Uh, you'll see him on uh, TikTok and uh, Instagram Reels, and he's right here on the podcast today. Hi Sam, how are you doing? Hello, yes, uh, I'm doing all right. Thanks Ted, thanks for having me on. So, why comedy and why TikTok? Um, well, I don't, I've always sort of um, fancied myself as... Uh, a bit of a funny, funny man. I don't think I would have had the. Uh, I'd always sort of fancied doing stand up, but I never. Have, I don't think I would have had the um, the courage to do it. Um, so basically, I I sort of dabbled with different forms of videos for a few years. Like at one point, I had like a a craft beer page on mm -hmm. like YouTube and Instagram. I was doing like home brewing videos, um, and then I sort of like ran out of steam with that, and so. Uh, Around the time that the uh, the lockdowns kicked in, when COVID when COVID hit the UK, early 2020, I just decided I'd been hearing a lot about TikTok, and I just decided to give a give a give it a go, just making comedy videos. Really, started off just doing little sketches, um, and then eventually got into stand up once the um, COVID eased and the lockdowns eased and things started to open up again. So it was a uh, yeah, I, I kind of used um, TikTok as a bit of a gateway drug, I think, into into the, the world of comedy, just to kind of uh, build up a little bit of uh, following and give myself a bit of confidence, I think, to start doing stand up. So you kind of a, a content creator before you did the comedy. You were doing uh, what well, craft beer was that? Was that kind of a straight thing, or were you were you doing it in a comedic way? A little bit, yeah. I was trying to make it entertaining, I suppose. Like I would like make little sneak little jokes in here and there. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't like a straight up. It wasn't a, like a comedy thing per se. It was more about the uh, the home brewing stuff. Uh, I did. I did like little beer reviews as well. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody. It, it, they didn't get a lot. Didn't get a lot of traction because it wasn't that. Um, it wasn't particularly. Uh, some some of the home brewing videos were quite useful. I think for people who were interested in home brewing, some of those got quite a few views mm -hmm. on YouTube. But yeah, the, the, the most of the content probably it wasn't the kind of thing that was going to go go anywhere. Which is, I think, is why I sort of lost lost steam, lost a bit of interest in it. Eventually, did it for about a year, and then eventually just thought I sort of knew secretly deep down the comedy was what I wanted to do. So I just thought I'll start doing that. So is that something you want to do? What instead of your day job, or are you just building up towards it, or what? What's the deal there? Yeah, I would like to do it full time. Yeah, if I could do comedy full time, but it's quite. Um, I think I'm still some way off that. Like, uh, it takes a few years to kind of build. Uh, a reputation. It's certainly stand-up wise. It takes quite a long time to to build up a, a build, obviously build up the skills and then build mm -hmm. up a reputation on the circuit as being like a decent act that people want to book. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a long. It's a, it's I think it's a long haul thing. But yeah, ultimately, I would quite like to do comedy full time. Just leaving the in real life uh, stuff to one side. In, in terms of your in terms of your online stuff, uh, I mean, just to just to give the uh, viewers some sort of idea. I mean, how many followers do you have uh, across social platforms? Uh, the main, main account's TikTok, really. It's about 170,000 on TikTok. Mm -hmm. And then Instagram, I think, is about 15,000. Those are the two main apps that I use. Um, like I said, I started off on TikTok with the comedy stuff and then basically just started using Instagram because I, I figured out it's probably a good idea to be using more than one app. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I do post on Facebook a little bit as well. Um, I ha- and, and not so much on YouTube. I have got a YouTube account, but I don't tend to post as much on there. Um, I'm trying to get more into the Facebook, actually, as I'm doing longer vids, like longer videos. I've started doing those recently, and they work better on Facebook. Like, and, and videos over three minutes, they work a lot better on Facebook because that's what the algorithm pushes because they want to keep people on there for longer. Yeah. So um, just, um, yeah, I, I need to post more on Facebook. So I think that's one of my goals for this year. Mm-hmm. Try and grow, grow a bit more on the other apps. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what's your um, what what are your other um, resolutions for the year? Um, I've got quite a specific one about um, my morning routine's been a, was a bit of a shambles last year. Like uh, I wasn't, um, yeah. I, I, some some days I'd I'd sort of wake up late. I'd go I go to bed too late and then end up waking up late and. And so I need to pick my son up and take him to school. And so I, I do that every morning. And so I'd end up skipping breakfast and just not starting the day off properly. So I'm trying to do a better job of uh, having a more consistent and organized morning routine. That's mm. probably, that's the main one that I think I've focused on this year. And the other one is just to be more consistent with uh, stand up in particular, because I think last year I had quite a lot going on. So I sort of sacrificed the stand up a little bit and was focused more on like, uh, family stuff and and the videos as well so i kept the videos going pretty consistently mm-hmm. but not so much with the stand-up so this year i want to try and do stand-up twice a week that's my ambition well that's my okay. resolution i guess you could call it yeah so how much stand-up have you done where have you where have you been seen uh well mostly manchester so i go into manchester do do nights there so it's usually usually just open mic nights because i'm still quite new so i i started doing it um first first set i did was just over two years ago uh, but I wasn't, like I said, for, uh, throughout those two years, I've not really been doing it consistently. So it's kind of been a bit on and off. Um, so I've probably done about a hundred, I've probably done about a hundred sets if I was to estimate. I've not been counting, but I've probably mm-hmm. done it in terms of getting up there about a hundred times. So I've Jeez. done a fair bit, but not, not as uh, consistent as I think I, I need to be. Because when you hear uh, comedians talking about doing stand up uh, and sort of planning out what, what, what they're doing with that, uh, obviously you've got to set well some people some people are, are writing it some people have got it in their head some people are doing a, a combination of the two um how, how does it kind of work for you because if you've done like 100 sets you you're mm-hmm. kind of getting getting definitely into the into the vibe yeah um what, what have you got have you got like a a, a five minute set or 10 minutes or what, what what have you got put together and you know if somebody said oh you're you're up on stage right now Mm. um how how do you recall that if you, you got it in your head have you got uh if you got things that you would look at yeah i've definitely got like um i've probably got about altogether probably about 15 minutes of like material um so i've got I've def- yeah i've got like a core set of material that I, I know works and i've kind of refined a little bit um over the last couple of years and but what i usually do um so I've, I've got a Word document. That, that's what I basically use. And I'll just sort of like keep everything in there. Mm-hmm. And just like, because I think it's electronically, it's just easier to tweak tweak and change things. Obviously, if you if you write it out uh, handwriting style, it's, it makes it a bit awkward if you want to just change a little line in there. So uh, I, I've got a Word document. But I think I do try and, when, I, when I'm doing new, working on new material, I kind of, I try and think it through in my head rather than write it down first, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think it's just, it, it's more natural, I think, to kind of, think things through and just and almost talk it talk it through yourself because that's how you when you perform it obviously you perform it verbally you don't you know it's not right it's not so I think it's more natural to kind of it works more it works better for me anyway I think everyone's got their own style like you said but it works better for me to kind of like almost talk it through out loud first and then write it down afterwards Mm -hmm. uh, because I think it just flows a bit better but yeah on if I'm doing new material at at an open mic night I'll I usually have a little uh, pad with me with some bullet points just to make sure I don't lose where I am if I'm doing new stuff. But there's there's about probably about 15, well, about 10 minutes of material I've got that I, I, I've, I've memorized and I don't need to check my notes for that stuff. But if I'm doing new stuff, I'll usually have a, a notepad with me. Mm. And I think it goes down well, does it? I mean, does it does it convert? Does what you're doing on videos convert to uh, to, to stage? Uh, it's, it is very different, really. Like um, a lot of the ideas I'll kind of like share but I, I have to, it is, it is different. Like it's, it's not really a, yeah. So it, it, it was a bit of a learning curve at the start. Um, stuff that works particularly well on social media doesn't necessarily work as a stand up idea. So it's kind of, 
yes and no, I think is the answer to your question. Like it's stand up is like it's trial and error, really. Like some stuff I'll I'll try and I'll think, oh, that's that's funny. And then I'll start performing it. I'll, I'll write it and then start performing it and then realize pretty quickly, like, I don't know. It's, I don't know why I thought this was going to work, but it's obviously not. Uh, so, yeah, it's hit, it's hit and miss, but that's kind of the process, I suppose. When people um, talk about uh, comedy or starting out in comedy, um, very often they're asked the same question. So I'm, I'm going to be really boring and ask you that question, which is, uh, who, who are you? Um, who do you watch? Who's your comedy heroes? for want of a better way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. So I probably, I think I've been quite heavily influenced by Ricky Gervais, probably more from The Office rather than his stand-up. Like I did, I did, I do watch his stand-up. I haven't seen his most recent one. Um, yeah, I think he's released one in the last few weeks, hasn't he? But so, yeah, the, the, I was really into The Office like when I was at school, like me and my mate, uh, Tom, used to basically like just, just fire David Brent quotes at, at each other. That was like pretty much all we did for the last couple of years of our school career. Um, and I picked up, I think I picked up quite a few Gervaisisms or just, just mannerisms that more David Brent probably than Gervais. But um, yeah, so I think he's probably been the biggest influence, uh, but not necessarily in terms of stand up. Uh, I quite like watching a lot of the American uh, stand up comics. Yeah. Those, th- those were the ones that I used to watch when I was a bit younger. I remember I used to watch Cat Williams, um, like Kevin Hart, uh, Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris Rock and Louis C.K. as well. I was, I've watched quite a lot of Louis C.K. So I think stand-up wise, I probably watch more American comedians mm. than the British ones. Mm. Yeah, because um, I mean, comedy seems to uh, have changed a lot. I mean, certainly in terms of like the open mic stuff and you know just doing clubs or whatever in, in Manchester. Uh, compare that. I mean, thinking about Manchester in particular, uh, I always think about. Um, um, Bernard Manning uh, mm. and because um, he had the, he had the club in Manchester it was the Embassy Club or something wasn't it yeah the Embassy um, I, I don't know I mean that, I'm, that, I'm going back a long time um, mm. but I remember I remember um, sort of driving past it once I never went um, but I remember um, hearing about it but a very different type of different type of comedy um, yeah. but at the same time what, what do you weave any kind of um any kind of w- the crowd work, as they call it, do you weave any of that into it? Um, or do you kind of stick to your, right, here's my 10 minutes of quality uh, quality stuff? Yeah, I probably, usually I'll stick more to the material. Like the crowd work is quite difficult. Um, it is an important skill to have. So I do need to work on it a little bit more. But um, there is a tendency, I think, when um, when you do, when you're quite new to comedy, um, you only do five minute sets usually at open mic night. Some nights you'll do 10 minutes uh, if you do like a, a, a more of an organized gig rather than open mic night. But um, so it's, it's not a lot of time, five minutes. So you kind of use that time. It's pre- the, the, the stage time is really precious, like, cause it is quite hard to get stage time. So, mm-hmm. so when you get the opportunity, you kind of fall into the habit of uh, working on your material rather than doing crowd work. Cause it's, 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 it's precious time to do that. So I think, the more estab- the more established you get and you get more stage time, then it's probably a good idea to work on the crowd work as well. But I don't tend to do as much of, of that. Um sometimes something happens in the room, like as you as you're up there, that you kind of have to no, you have to acknowledge. Like um, so that's that's kind of an that's a skill in itself, is like knowing how to deal moment with moments like that. Some like somebody I remember I was uh, I did a night at the Frog and Bucket in Manchester. It's it's called Beat the Frog. It's like it's a it's a night for new acts, basically. Um, you go on stage, you just got to try and stay up there for five minutes without the uh, the the audience kicking you off, essentially. That's how it works if you're not doing well. Mm-hmm. And uh, somebody was sick in the audience as I was um, doing my set. I was about I was about a minute in to, to my set. Tough and, uh, yeah, somebody was uh, it wasn't my material, I think, that made him <laughs> sick. I think there was some alcohol involved as well. But it, that was that was an opportunity. That was a, a learning curve for me. It didn't didn't it didn't throw me off too badly. I managed to I managed to recover. But. I just yeah at the time I just didn't know like how to handle that at all like because I, I was still quite new to comedy at that stage well I still am now so mm-hmm. it's, but a more a more seasoned comedian would have known like would have used that because it's it, it was a good opportunity in hindsight to say something funny about it's quite yeah. a it's quite a unique uh, situation uh, to be in next time somebody's sick on uh, in the middle of one of your sets you'll you'll know what to say because I'm sure you've probably thought of plenty of things since. 
Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. Well, the obvious <laughs> thing to say was would be um, like obviously I, I I hope my I hope it wasn't my material that, that was that was the problem uh, <laughs> that made someone sick because that that would be a bit of a weird badge of honor to have in itself if if your if your set was going so badly and it made somebody throw up in the audience and that's quite a it's quite a unique uh, sticker to have on your CV, but. Yeah, now I'm pretty sure he was he was he was he was quite drunk. The guy because he just left like he was he was sick, and they just what he just he obviously he was going to get thrown out. <laughs> so he kind of I think he just realised it was best to just walk out. It mm-hmm. took me a couple of seconds to realise what had actually happened, but yeah, it was a surreal moment. Well, at least you had a good reason to walk out in the middle of your set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, it wasn't my fault. I don't think. <laughs> so let's talk about um, let's talk about. Uh, uh, TikTok. Um, how long does it take to get to what was it, hundred and seventy thousand? Yeah, about one hundred seventy something. Yeah. Well, it's, it's I've been on there now for about uh, coming up to four years, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. coming up to four years. I started in twenty twenty. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, not not far off. So it's been a bit of a slow. There's not. It's been a gradual thing for me, really. I've not really had any kind of one video that's. Every now and then you'll get a video that goes a bit more viral and get like a, a million a million views or so, and you get a little spike. Mm-hmm. But it's not been there's not been one moment where it's kind of gone like whoosh. It's kind of been like a gradual thing. Well, so yeah. some some people grow a lot quicker. Like like there's, there'll be some accounts that will go from zero to a million followers in inside a year. Or it really depends. Obviously, it's obviously depends how good your content is and and how committed you are to posting regularly that kind of stuff so mm. everyone's on got their own kind of trajectory really yeah what you've got is is something that's slowly building and it's kind of sustainable i mean do you see that yeah i think so like i, I do feel like i've still got yeah the, the views will uh fluctuate quite a lot so especially on tiktok like um yeah, I, I, like I'll, I, you can post a video and it gets a million and a half views, and then the next one you post will get five thousand views. So it's really hit. It is really hit and miss. But that, I think that's just like the nature of of the algorithm. Like it's it's all about. You don't get a lot of credit for previous success. If that makes sense, the algorithm doesn't really care. You just it's all about how that that one video does. Mm-hmm. Like it's all about watch time. If people aren't watching it um, when they when you first post it, they'll show it to like a thousand people thousand mm. accounts and if if no one's interested they won't push it much further yeah. than that so it's it's not um yeah it's 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 all about just focusing on i think just making good content really don't worry yeah. too much about the numbers or or yeah followers or views or anything like that and just try and keep making content the the, the big challenge for me is like trying trying to keep things fresh and moving into like new content areas rather than just th- things getting a bit stale Mm-hmm. Like, I think last year I was struggling a little bit with, I did feel like I was kind of just making content for the wrong reasons, really. I feel like I, I, I slipped into the habit of trying to make stuff that I thought would get views rather than making stuff that I thought was actually like interesting. Yeah. So, I, so now I'm trying to do a bit more of, of, of the latter and kind of work on stuff that I'm actually interested in. So I've, I've started doing, I, want, I also want to start doing a bit more stand up content as well, because I didn't post that much stand up stuff last year. Mm-hmm. I was going to open mic nights and stuff, but I wasn't really doing a lot of content. And I think there's loads of interesting content to be made around stand-up, particularly around open mic nights, because there's not many acts. Loads of people post clips, like stand-up clips online. Um, uh, cup comedians, I'm talking about, obviously. But not many people actually post stuff about like the actual process that goes into stand-up. Yeah. Like, everyone sees the end product, uh, but no one sees, like, no one, no one's really sharing the behind-the-scenes stuff. Some people probably are, but I don't see a lot of that stuff. I follow yeah. loads of acts on on Instagram and TikTok and etc. So I, I want to do a bit more of that this year as well. Yeah, because uh, I, I noticed that because um, I I saw one. Um, I remember one video of yours where you were you were doing a bit of stand up, uh, and there was kind of the there was like the build up to that, and you were talking about how you're anticipating how it's going to go and 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 so on. Um, mm. And that is interesting. Um, yeah. And what's also interesting is now um a lot of comedians and a lot of stand-ups they're they're kind of they're they're paving the way as far as their career is concerned by by putting their stuff out basically for free on on youtube yeah uh, and putting out specials on youtube 
mm. um, and such like. Do, do, do you see yourself doing something like that in the future? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm probably still a couple of years off being able to do that. Like, um, yeah, not really at that kind of stage, but I'd, yeah, hopefully uh, in a couple of years, maybe down the line, mm -hmm. uh, put, I'd like to put out, do do longer shows and and sort of build, build a, try and build an audience in parallel. Like, because at the moment people really just watch my videos. It's more about the social media stuff rather than like people probably don't really see me as like a stand up comedian because I'm still quite new to it and I don't really post that much stand up stuff online. So it's kind of um, over the next couple of years, I suppose I want to kind of like just address that, re just rebalance that a little bit. So I'm more of a stand up. I'm, I'm not going to abandon the stuff I do on social media, but mm. more of a, a stand up comedian who does videos as well if that makes sense rather than yeah. at the moment yeah. i'm just like a, a content creator i suppose most comedians on the stand-up circuit they don't really use social media effectively like some people a lot of people post clips of their mm. of their sets and stuff and that and that's all they'll do mm. but uh so they don't really utilize so they kind of do things the hard way really if you want like the old-fashioned way if you want to be a stand-up comedian before like social media was around um is you just you you you'd start doing open mic nights and you'd you'd build your set and you'd build your confidence and then eventually you'd start doing open spots on the circuit that's what they call it. it's like a trial spot a uh, proper uh gig and then after three or four years you might start getting some paid gigs and it and you just slowly build a reputation and eventually find your way onto the circuit and hopefully make it onto tv if 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 um if if you know if you if you're successful um and a lot of people still just do that a lot of comedians basically miss an opportunity with social media because they don't use it to kind of promote themselves. And if they do use it, maybe not as effectively as they could. So I think I've definitely got a good opportunity there because I've kind of already got this. I've already got a bit of social media. Uh, I've built a bit of a following and um, I kind of understand how, how to make content. Uh, so it gives me a bit of an edge, I think, on, on, on the other acts. Uh, but I just need to, I still need to improve stand-up wise. Obviously, like I was saying before, I'm still relatively new to it. So it's just a case of uh, developing the stand-up skills as well. Mm -hmm. So when you started out, what, what was your, um, what was your objective? Were you in the middle of, in the middle of COVID thinking, what shall I do? Shall I just uh, uh, get back onto the content creation and, uh, and do something to amuse myself? Or was it, um, no, I'm, actually, I'm going to, uh, kickstart my um, kickstart my stand up career and uh, and get out there. What was the motivation? Yeah, I think initially it was probably probably wasn't initially thinking about stand up at the start when I first started posting the comedy videos. Um, I think I was just looking for something a bit different, really. Like I, I um, yeah, I, so I wasn't really sure what I was doing work wise was what I wanted to do long term. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said earlier, I sort of, I'd always sort of, I've always, I've always been able to make people laugh. Just usually with just my friends or people, yeah, you know, people that that I know, just like socially, I can, I always been able to make people laugh. So I just thought I'd give it a go, um, see, see, start making some comedy videos, uh, mm -hmm. see what happens. So I'd, I'd kind of, I think the objective was to eventually be able to do do it as a job, I suppose. But when I first started, I wasn't really sure how that would work or what it would look like. I'm still sort of figuring that out to a certain extent because, um, yeah, it's it, it's it's not an easy thing. It's not. It takes a long time to kind of build a a full time career out of it. But um, I think I'm heading in that direction, but still some way off. I think so. I think the, the long story short, I think the objective was to try and carve out an alternative career. I think. What's your uh, What's your best video? What's the What's had the most views? The biggest one was probably. Um, I think the, it was on Instagram actually. There, there's two that have got pretty much the same number of views. I think the biggest one I had, um, I had one on TikTok that was got about about three and a half million views, and it was it was a it was a, a really like silly video, just a short video, and I didn't even, I, I nearly didn't post it because I thought that's a bit. It's a bit. It was just a bit of a, a dad joke. It was um, so you might have seen on on Instagram and TikTok you can duet videos where you basically you comment on it to the video a video next to you and you, you sort of react into it yeah so it was just a video of a guy throwing a fish in that into a lake and um it was it was in china i think so it was an asian guy and and, and all i and i just it was it was a bit of a pun i just said um, uh this guy in the video here is one of the wealthiest people in asia um 
he DM'd me asking me what's my net worth. And I said, uh, no, I said, I DM'd him asking him what's his net worth. And he said, uh, I don't know, I made it myself. As in, like, he made the, <laughs> the net himself. And, uh, and I, so, yeah, it was, it, it was a bit of a corny, corny joke. And I didn't really think, I, like I said, didn't, nearly didn't post it, but it just blew up for some reason. That one got about, got about three and a half million views. Mm. And uh, I had one on Instagram that got about the same number. It was just a cooking tutorial of me making beans on toast. Right. That, that one did really well. Got got a lot of views. Got got a few followers off that one. Step one, beans in the pan. A lot of people put the beans in the toaster. That's a common mistake. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, get your bread out. Whack that in the toaster. Now, these toasters can be tricky to figure out how they work, but eventually I got there. You just uh, press that down and then it turns on. Quick word on the toaster. Now, these are a little bit more expensive than some of the other ingredients on the list, but I only recently found out that you can, in fact, use these more than once. So don't feel like you have to buy a new one for every set of beans on toast. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, that was a slightly longer video. The beans on toast one, that was that was over a minute. So that was probably a, bet, a better video in terms of like actual effort that went into it. But yeah. yeah, you never know. Like you never know what's going to blow up. Yeah. It's it's a bit random to a certain extent. Yeah, I think I saw the beans on toast one. I also saw um, uh, saw one. Uh, I think it might have been more recent that we um, you were making bugs on a log. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That was another. Yeah, I've done a few like little cooking tutorials like that. Just little spoof cooking tutorials. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I'll, mainly off the back of that. Uh, beans on toast one it is a good i think it's a good way to make sort of um like l longer form content i've been trying to make longer videos basically more longer than a minute um because initially when i started doing tiktok it was short videos because they were it's easy to get views with shorter videos basically mm. but now i'm trying to kind of um uh, it's a bit i think it's, doing longer videos it's a bit more substantive and uh it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit just post stuff that's got a bit more substance to it. Basically, it takes a bit. It takes a bit of more effort to do that, obviously. But it's what I'm trying to do. Mm. The thing is, even with your even with your longer ones, the good thing is there's kind of there's there's like you know the stupid puns and little little bits that you might have as a as a standalone video elsewhere that have done perfectly well. Uh, mm. And then you've got you've got stuff like that in in the middle of it. Yeah, so it's, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, it's not like oh, I'm just watching one thing for one payoff, one you know, one uh, one pun one punchline at the end of it. Mm. You've actually got you know, boom, 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 uh, uh, you know, bits as as you go along. So they're uh, they're pretty good value. Um, yeah, as, as videos go. What was you? What's been your worst one? What What have you had mm. that's either completely bombed, or it's had you you know people chasing you around with pitchforks? Um. I post videos that don't do well like all the time. Like so, there's been loads of videos, especially on TikTok. Uh, like I said earlier, you can kind of, you can post one that will get a million views, and then the next one you'll post will get five thousand if you're lucky. So it's it is. I've had loads of videos that don't get a lot of views. I'm trying to think of one. I think in the early days, I was a lot. I, I wasn't as careful or worried about offending people. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was a little bit, probably a little bit immature with some of the stuff I was doing. I'm trying to think of a specific video and that got a lot of, the thing is on TikTok, it's difficult. They're so strict on the community guidelines. So you can't really say anything too crazy because it'll just, the video will just get taken down. Yeah. But I did a video that didn't get taken down. Um. But yeah, looking back at it, I was, wasn't really, um, wasn't really happy with it. It, it was, I can't even remember what the joke was, but it was, yeah, it was, it was about, it was basically a video of a, of a dog being um, attacked by a snake. It was being like, it was being like strangled by a snake, like a constrictor mm -hmm. type thing. Yeah. And um, I did a video, like it was a duet and um, it was me basically uh, pretending to be the dog. That like was from the point of view of the dog being strangled. And uh, it obviously wasn't very funny. Like, and I remember I got a comment from somebody <laughs> said something like it just said oh yeah uh this is disgusting or something like i'm, I'm going to un un unfollowed basically that kind of thing mm. and i remember thinking like yeah i can't i think i might have actually deleted the video i can't remember if i brought it down or not but that was one example where that was the first one that came to my mind where i didn't feel i wasn't happy with that like yeah. didn't looking back it's not the kind of thing that I'll, i'd post again anyway yeah people love animals yeah you yeah. got to keep away from the animals yeah, it was. A, I, th it was, I think it was, if it was a child being strangled by a by a, a snake, uh, you probably wouldn't have got, got any issues with that. 
maybe not. Yeah, but a dog. Oh no, yeah. the dogs. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. It was it. It was a. Uh, yeah, I, I understand why people didn't like that because quite quite often I'll get comments from people who don't like jokes that I make, and I'm okay with that. Like I like. I'll always try and respond positively as long as the comment someone, because often people leave comments like constructive criticism, you could call it like, they'll just say, oh, I didn't really like that. Mm. Um, and that, that they, they'll, they'll be a, they'll, they'll, they might follow me. And so I'll, and I'll, I'll usually, I recognize the name because I get a, a lot of, I'll, sometimes people comment on multiple videos. So I, I'm quite happy for people to take issue with jokes and stuff. Um, and nine, nine times out of 10, I'll, I'll disagree, mm. but I can sort of see where they're coming from and I'm okay with that. Mm. um that's just that's just, that's life isn't it subjective uh, especially comedy um but yeah there's there has there's been a few occasions where i've kind of in the end agreed with the commenter and been and sort of yeah regretted the the joke or the video and it, that 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 dog one being an example but usually it's it's a it's a case of like oh yeah i understand where you're coming from but it's agree to disagree kind of thing mm-hmm. I think you must be quite heavily into your football because there's quite a few football references in your jokes, um, mm-hmm. and that's I, know, I have to say that's where you lose me because I, I don't I don't know anything about football. Yeah. yeah. Um, is is there anything else? Would you say that you kind of got a niche or have you got a way in which you would want things to 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 go? I mean, what yeah. what, what lands best for you, um, joke wise? I think more recently I haven't been posting them on Instagram, so you might not have seen them, but. Um, cause they're quite long, the videos that they tend to be about three or four minutes long. Mm-hmm. And I did try and post one on Instagram, but it's Instagram gets a bit weird. They, they, they limit the reels, I think to 90 seconds. That's the mm-hmm. maximum. So I don't yeah. think you can, I don't know if I can post them on there. I'll, I'll probably post a few more clips, but, um, I've been doing like football, uh, like vlogs. Like, so I'm, I'm a Stoke fan. I go to, I go to Stoke game. So I, I like record clips during the game and before and after during halftime, just anything that I think's like amusing, like I can say something about that. Mm-hmm. And um, so I've been posting those and they've been getting quite a lot of, I, I always gauge it not necessarily by the views, but by the the comments. Yeah. Like, cause that, that, that you can tell if people are interested in it and some of them do quite well. Like some of them get like hundreds of thousands of views. I've not had one that's got like massive amounts of like millions of views yet, but mm-hmm. I can tell that that's kind of a bit more meaningful content that people are enjoying because it's just get, gauging off the comments, like a lot of positive feedback and uh, people just genuinely interested um so i think yeah the niche probably going i think there's two two there's two areas i'm probably going to make a lot more content this year it's like uh the football stuff going to keep doing that and also uh stand up like i said earlier i want to try and make a lot more content around stand up so those will probably be the two areas i think i'll probably focus on a bit more content wise but nobody's going to be disappointed you're still going to do your recipes yeah 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 i I won't be exclusive to those two things (laughs) usually i'll get an idea and and, I'll, and within a couple of days, I'll I'll churn out churn out the videos. It could be anything, really. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, I won't I won't disappoint people who are enjoying the uh, the cooking cooking videos. So in terms of um, in terms of live performances and the open mic and stuff like that, um, where is it that you 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 do the performances and and where can people see you actually playing? Most of the gigs I do at the moment are sort of open mic nights. Uh, I've got a couple of things booked in in Manchester at the end of the month. Um, but yeah, that'll be probably just on my 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 stories is probably the best place. If people, I I'll I'll, I'll always post if I'm doing a gig. Mm-hmm. I'll always post. Um, I'll always post them on Instagram stories. So that's probably the place to keep an eye on if people are looking to mm-hmm. come and watch watch me do a bit of stand up. Mm-hmm. But usually it's just open mic nights. Like I said, usually I, I go to an open mic night on Wednesdays in Manchester. Um, so that that's yeah, it's in it's in, it's in, uh, it's in a place called Stage and Radio in the Northern Quarter. Right. So if anyone's interested in like trying a bit of stand up themselves, and they should come along to that because it is a really good night. So it's a very supportive sort of atmosphere. Like a lot of comics go down there and try out new material and stuff. You get to see obviously people who are just starting out in comedy, but you also get a lot of like. Um, more seasoned acts like pro, pro acts who are coming down and trying trying out new material so you get a bit of a mix of 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 quality obviously but it's it's a good room to kind of uh learn a, the craft of stand up so mm-hmm. yeah that would be something to check out if people are interested in in trying stand up themselves so you'd say it's a it's a like a really kind of um positive experience i mean 
I, I can imagine I can imagine people feeling a little bit nervous going out, uh, especially oh, yeah, yeah. people who all got glasses in their hands um, and thinking, how am I actually going to be able to, to be able to do this and, mm. uh, and not uh, and not come away ter either terribly embarrassed or, or or booed or whatever it may be? Uh, have you found that people have been supportive just generally? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've got have a, a lot of support. All the other acts are very supportive. Like ninety nine percent of audience members are, are always supportive as well. Um, when you're doing like a a, a, a proper gig with a mm -hmm. you know an audience, because at open mic nights it tends to be mostly comedians in the audience. Like it tends to be um, the other acts who are sort of like watching each other. If that makes sense, you get a few uh, uh, additional people in there as well sometimes. Yeah. But, but yeah, most people are very supportive. It, it, it is nerve wracking. Like I remember, I was really nervous the first time I did stand up, but I think the, be the best thing that can happen to you when you're doing stand up, when you when you're new to it, is the best thing that can happen is you have a bad set, if that makes mm. sense. Because you because you because then you realise it's really not that big of a deal. Like it's you know the world doesn't doesn't end. It's kind of like I think you overestimate how much people are thinking about you, if that makes sense. Like you go to any open mic night, comedy wise, and you're going to see probably two or three people have a bad set every every week. Like yeah. It's a law of averages, like it happens to everybody. Uh, especially when you're trying out new material as well, you never really know if it's going to work or not. So mm. it's kind of, um, you realise as soon as you have your first bad set, it's really not that big of a deal. Like, so that's that's quite a liberating thing to go through. Because that happened to me probably, I think on my fourth set that I did, uh, I had a bit of a rough one and realised pretty quickly that it's, obviously it's not, not particularly enjoyable at the time, but you, once you've been through it once, you realise that it's kind of, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I think, it, yeah, it takes a while to realize that sort of thing, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I also, I think that does also come with, uh, come with age. Um, when you realize that actually people aren't really interested in, in, in what you're doing and what you're doing wrong, um, yeah. more, more specifically. Mm. Um, I, I, I know you kind of, you know, walk outside and you think, I, I don't think my trousers are, are, are sort of riding very well. And, I, I probably look a complete fool, um, but the reality is nobody's looking at your trousers. Nobody cares. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. that's the worst thing. It's the apathy. I want people to care about my trousers. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but um, but yeah. So that's good that it's a supportive environment. Um, uh, with with, um, with the open mics, when you like you say a lot of the lots of the people in the in the audience are also comedians. Um, is it? Um, is it a situation where people are all sat there thinking, oh, shit, I wish I'd thought of that? Do you get a lot of that? Do you? Yeah, get I think that? there's it's probably an element of that. Yeah, the, 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 I think when you see somebody um, doing well, um, I think your first thought is probably, it's, I think there's a sense of relief because open mic nights, you never know how it's going to go. Like nobody wants to sit there and see somebody, you know, bomb for five minutes it's quite yeah. uncomfortable to watch yeah. but um but at the same time there's probably an element of so you, you want people to do well but i think there is probably an element of jealousy as well if you see somebody who's really like smashing it mm. and maybe if you've already been up and your set didn't go as well as you'd liked even if you did okay you kind of think oh so yeah i think there's always that element of like well yeah what like i said why didn't i think of that or that's yeah. a really good idea like so yeah, there's kind of there's there's always a I think probably an element of that, but I think it's kind of overridden by the more supportive side of things where people people want you to do well, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants you to to really struggle. So mm -hmm. uh for anybody that hasn't already stumbled uh, across your stuff, either on TikTok or uh or Instagram or elsewhere, uh where can you be found and what are you doing on those on those spaces? So I'm I basically put, I post regularly on TikTok, uh, Instagram at Sam Foley. Uh, it's, on Instagram, it's at dot it's at Sam dot Foley, and I am posting uh, sketches. It's a lot of football content. Going to be posting more stand up content. Um, I'm also trying to post more on Facebook as well. So I'm on there as well. Uh, just search Sam Foley on there. I should come up. Um, yeah, so you can expect a. Uh, a lot more st uh, stand-up content this year and football content as well as the usual kind of uh, nonsensical sketches that I've been mm -hmm. doing for the last nearly four years. 
nonsensical stuff is the uh, is is all good. Um, I think everybody loves a good pun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Important not to lose sight of that. That that net joke that I mentioned earlier, the net worth one. That mm-hmm. was one of the first jokes I actually translated uh, into the stand up stand up material wise. So it's just I, I I actually bought a little. I don't think I've got it to hand, but I bought a little fishing net type thing. You know, mm-hmm. the kind of net you just you use for a goldfish tank to scoop out a goldfish. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought that, so I needed one that could fit in my back pocket. So it's it's one of my first jokes that I wrote. It's probably still one of the best jokes in terms of like the reaction mm-hmm. that it gets. Mm-hmm. And it's just basically it's just that I, I set it up like I say I was at a business networking event last week. And this fellow came up to me, asked me, what's my net worth? And then I pulled the net out and say, I don't know, I made it myself. Mm-hmm. And it always gets, that one always gets a, a good reaction. As long as I don't fumble the net, which I did once, the net kind of got stuck in my back pocket as I was trying to pull it out. So yeah. I kind of like butchered the joke a little bit, but <laughs> generally uh, that one goes down pretty well. It's one of the few examples probably of, of a joke that I've just basically just converted straight from social media to, to stand up and, and it works. Yeah. Usually I have to um, work a bit harder to kind of, change things around a bit yeah yeah i think um yeah you can't beat a bit of a uh, bit of prop comedy yeah yeah a lot of <laughs> a lot of comedians turn their nose up at prop comedy but mm. I, I i do like it like there's there's a few there's a few acts on the circuit now i've seen that do that do a really good job with props as well yeah i don't really have a problem with it myself i think it's it's there's so just another avenue of a sort of a creativity comedy wise isn't it like it's a bit more i don't know i think so it's seen someone I often find watching people do stand-up specials, an hour of someone just stood there talking with a microphone can be a bit um, repetitive. So I, I do think it's there's something to be said for kind of mixing it up a little bit. Mm. Like I really like um, Tim Vine. I don't know if you've heard of, if you, yeah, you've heard of yeah, Tim yeah, Vine. Yeah. I think he's really good. And he, he does predominantly one-liners and he, he does loads of prop, prop jokes and mm. and uh those kind of those kind of jokes where you like you said earlier you think you're watching you think oh that's a really good idea why has no one thought of that before you mm-hmm. know like my, one of my favorite jokes he ever did I actually I actually um for, but this was years ago before I started doing comedy I, I ripped it off and posted it on Facebook on my personal account and it got loads of likes <laughs> it was uh, it was basically um he had he had CV written down on a piece of paper and he basically um he he'd been coloring it in but he just left a little bit at the bottom mm-hmm. and he just he, he set it up um he said he just said oh yeah I've, I've, I've nearly finished filling in my CV. And he's like, I've just got to do that little bit there, <laughs> corner. Like really simple idea, but yeah. then, like really funny at the same time. He's, he's a yeah, Tim Vine's really good. It's one of my favourites. Yeah. Listen, thanks very much for being on the show. Uh, it's interesting to find out some uh, some kind of insights into what you're doing, what you're aiming to do in the future, um, and uh, look at the uh, the comedy that you have been doing, and uh, hopefully uh, have you on again soon. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for asking me on. It's been uh, nice to have a chat. And uh, yeah, it's been an enjoyable conversation. So yeah, thanks again. That was a conversation recorded on the 7th of January 2024 with Sam Thorley. My thanks again to Sam for being on the show. My thanks to you for watching and for listening. If you'd like to contact me, you can DM me at Ted Jones Media. And if you want to be on the show, please do get in touch. Until the next video, goodbye.